Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. This is something from Ireland, Matt Darcy, Irish whiskey, Nuri 1817, 40% ABV. Now, what we have here is something that I'm not really, I'm going to use the word comfortable with. Why? Because we have a guy, he's an entrepreneur from um, Newry, and he has written a lot about whiskey and so on, but what he basically did, his name is, then I'm um, trying to pronounce this correctly here, Michael um, McNeon, is he um, basically took the rights of an old distillery, which really was there, um, and uh, Darcy's, and he re-established this distillery. I'm not a fan of that. I hated, not the products of Michters, but I hated Michters for doing exactly that. A right, businessman from New York City goes, buys a brand that is defunct, re resurrects the brand, and ta-da. Um, and then they go back and say, way back in 1780, we, and nothing with we. All right, and the same thing here, a little bit of that kind of... Um, uh, rubs off. It's actually, they tried to say um, that this distillery was here, um, founded in 1817. BS. <laughs> All right. It closed its doors in 1918 and 100 years later. Interesting enough, 100 years later, I think there's some type of copyright rule or a market r trademark rule that says there should be 100 years in between them or whatever. And then he bought the rights. Um, he bought the rights of the name Matt Nar Narcy um, Limited and Nar Ma Matt Narcy and Co. Limited and created this. So this is a picture way back when. There's these mirrors in Ireland at the bars and so on where you'll see actually Darcy on them and so on and so on. So what do we have here? This made it over to Germany um, through Irish minus whiskeys, E-Y-S dot D-E. Um, Marike Spitzer, a good friend of mine. So I bought this bottle as well as the 10-year-old. I'll be talking about that in my next video. A 10-year-old grain mixed with a 17-year-old single malt. Not bad. But this is a 4-year-old grain and a 4-year-old single malt. What distillery has been distilling for about 4 to 5 years now that might be able to give him this product? Great Northern, maybe? Mm, possibly. All right. So so we have a copycat. I'm going to call it that. Um, that's what it feels like to me. Someone who's copying the success of the past and trying at least somewhat to pass it off as their own success today. Aikenville, the partner they work with, did exactly the same thing at the beginning. I, I am not a great fan of that. Um, now, Aikenville, for example, um, they have a lot of success now. People love them, and maybe rightfully so for the gin. But as far as I know, all of their whiskey actually was um, not distilled there. So um, that's what I'm kind of going, mm, is this the right way to go? Is this the right way to do this? All right. So um, we have, for example, Dunville, same thing. Dunville was an old, old brand that they resurrected and now they're selling as if a little bit, as if it, it says one of the biggest one, Dunville 1808 blended Irish whiskey. Has nothing to do with Elchenville 1808, but hey, that number on there really means something. Um, the 12 year old from Dunville I like, yes, yes, yes. Um, but they are making some whiskeys out there that are, um, I, the, the first three crowns I did not like peated, and that um, feckin' Irish whiskey is something to not write home about. All right, the people there, beautiful. The guys doing stuff at Elchenville, excellent. And I hope they're going to have a lot of success with their own whiskeys one day. Now, going back to Darcy's, um, uh, Darcy's um, I... I do know, I have read that they plan on building their own distillery there in Northern Ireland in Newry. We're talking about between 6 and 8 million euros, pounds, I'm not sure. And that's going to be something interesting. And they do need to have, create market distribution channels and so on and so on. But there's always that bitter type of aftertaste of taking an old brand and resurrecting it and calling it your own. Just don't like it. 
All right, so this is 33 euros over here in uh, Germany. This is 32 euros, Kinahan, small batch, over here in Germany. And I thought I'd compare them, 40%, 46%. Now, um, I do not know the exact composition of this. Uh, Quizel, when I had him on my stream a couple of weeks ago, did not tell me exactly what he put in here. He did not tell me exactly the ratio of grain to malt. I just know I have the 2020 version and the batch number eight. It's non-shield filtered and was matured in American oak. So on the nose, wow, okay. Now, I've smelled this a few times. This is young grain. I don't know if it's 80-20, 80% grain, 20% mold. It might be 90, um, 10, it might be 60, 40. But definitely there's more grain than malt in here. And it's a young grain. It's a woody grain. It's a green wood grain. It's like, um, and it does, if you want to put it in the positive spin and touch, it has a little bit of pistachio. Um, nut in there. Um, it is nutty. It is malty. But it's definitely here not my wheelhouse. On the other hand, Kinahan's, small batch. Oh, I get the vanilla. I get the malt. I get a tiny little bit of a marshmallow moment. Um, I like this much better. 32 euros cheaper, 33 euros. So the bottle design shows something a little bit older. The LL on here is also a little bit more of a old-fashioned type of um, design here. We're going to have to see how this works out in the, in the future here. Okay, I'm not going to read about monks and charting. Oh, they actually go back to 1575 and say, hey, we have a history of distilling all the way back to 1575. No, you don't. You don't even have your own distillery. Arr! This really gets on me, as you notice. I'm sorry. I'm ranting and raving here. I just hate it. I just hate people. Um, I hate it when other distilleries that really do their own work, that really started in 2014, 2018, 2020, whatever, and they're putting out their first products in the mar market three, four, five years old, and then um, I go, oh, that's young and so on, but I'm never going to bark on them, never going to cut them down and say, hey, you took a shortcut, um, you should have done this and this and this. Hey, they did it themselves. Just creating a label, just buying the whiskey, just bottling, and then claiming something back in the in the year fifteen seventy five is just going against against everything um, that I basically believe in with my friends, the distillers, some of them over there in Ireland, or Germany, or America, or wherever else in this world, Scotland, and so on. All right, forty percent. First of all, the first expression was thin. And the problem is the thinness turns into a grained heat at the end. There's not much bitterness, but it's an it's a alcohol sharpness towards the end. Um, I'm going to be a nice. Imagine this whiskey at 10 years of age. Oh, that's going to be interesting. Yummy, yummy. This whiskey at 40% and 4 years of age and 33 euros, it's just not cutting it for me. Um, I did a little bit of research. I just thought, okay, good. What whiskey would I buy over here in Germany if I had 35 euros burning a hole in my pocket? What could I get for 35 euros? I'm going to name these products here for you. I can get a Bushmills 10. I can get a Connemata. I can get a Hinch peated single malt. I can get a Hyde number 8 stout finish. I can get the Irishman. I can get the Pogue single malt. E nasty stuff. I can get the Sexton. I can get Turconnell. I can get West Cork peated charred cast. I can get a West Cork virgin oak. I can get a West Cork bog oak charred cast. I can get a West Cork sherry port and rum. I can get Calvados from West Cork. It's amazing. From Glendalough, I can get the Grand Cru Burgundy cask finish from Inch single pot still. I can get Kilbegan single pot still. I can get Bushmills original. I can get Bushmills black bush. I can get Bushmills Caribbean as well as American oak cask finishes. I can get the Busker triple cast smooth. 
I can get the Dublin Liberties, um, Oak Devil five year old. I can get a Glendalough Madeira cask finish, really like that one. I can get a Calvados cask finish from Glendalough. I can get Hinch small batch bourbon cask as well as the Double Wood five year olds. From the Irishman, I can get the Founders Reserve. From I can get normal one liter Jameson. I can get the Jameson cask mate IPA as well as the Stout. All in one liter. I can get the Jameson Crested as well as the Black Barrel. I can get Kilbagan Black. I can get Kinahan's Cast Project as well as a small batch. I can get Patty. I can get the new Peakers Blinders, McKicky, Irish Blended Whiskey. I can get the Pogue, normal small batch, triple distilled. And I can get the Powers Gold Label Non Chill Filtered. Yay. Prepper number 12, hmm, the quiet men I can get. I can get Rowan Co. I can get the Sailor's Home, the Journey. I can get Slain, Triple Cask. I'm almost finished. I can get Teeling, Small Batch. I can get Talamodu, Caribbean Rum, Normal, as well as the 12-year-old and the Cider. I can get West Cork Irish IPA and Stout. I can get Writer's Tears Copper Pot. I can get the Writer's Tear Double Oak. I can get the Glendalough Double Barrel Single Grain. I can get the Hyde Number 5 Grain with Burgundy Finish. I can get the Kilbagan Single Grain as well as the Teeling Single Grain. Those are just most, if not all, or some of the products I can get over here in Germany for under 35 euros. Amazing, isn't it? A lot of good products out there. What would I pick? I really like that Writer's Tears Double Oaked. If I were to pick one of these out of all of them, I would pick that one. The Glendalough Madeira cast finish would be probably number two. Um, but there's some good, good stuff out there. So, um, <laughs> I don't know what the 10 uh, year old is like, but I'm going to say this is a pass for me. This is a D plus C minus in taste. Uh, value for money is also D, D plus, um, not worth it. Kinahan's 32 euros, tastes better. Mm. Much better taste feel, mouth feel. There's a tiny, tiny little bitterness in the middle there. And then sweetness kicks back in. I like much, much better. All right. So whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting mm, rare and exotic whiskeys. Today it wasn't great, but maybe tomorrow when the second video here is going to be much better. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for liking, subscribing, telling me what would be your favorite um, whiskey of under 35 euros, pounds or dollars. What can you get for it? And see you soon. Whiskey Jason here. Bye bye.